One of the numerous concerns in D300 in 2001 was the inequity that existed between the schools and the fact that some students were able to have many more opportunities than others only because of fundraising initiatives from either the booster organizations or from the parent organizations and it's to be expected but in other communities where wealth is not there or it's much more difficult to raise additional revenue to support fundraising initiatives uh, it was very difficult and challenging. I'll be very frank the school district was very destitute we were graduating students that could not compete at the college level because we did not have technology or scientific equipment that could equip them to compete with other students. The idea really came about in terms of could we use the vehicle of a foundation to raise public and private funds uh, through a charitable organization not affiliated with the school board and the purpose would then again to be to address some of the inequities uh, that were present in District 300 at that time. District 300 has one of the very lowest tax rates in the area and really still does and amazingly does so much with so little, relatively, comparatively little money. And I just thought, wow, you know, if we can take this and supplement it without having to go to taxpayers again and really try to find ways to to build up what we already do well and come up with ideas to do other things even better. I, I just thought it was a terrific, terrific uh, opportunity to help out. Well, actually the first year was spent putting together the structure of the foundation. Obviously you have people that immediately wanted to raise money and then spend it right away. And that's what foundations are for, you know, to raise funds and, and to then to spend accordingly, but you have to have the structure in place. We were not interested uh, at that time being just the, the flavor of the month or the flash in the pan it is. Look how great we are and two years later it just dies away. And, and that's the most difficult part, putting together the structure, the governance piece. So. We cover four categories, performing and fine arts, science and technology, student leadership, and literacy. I think when I go back and I took a look at the grants that we did, I think the largest grants were for the beginning of the science and technology. We knew that that had to change. Microscopes for every middle school every in the district, school. which, Absolutely. you know, in a lot of districts is a given. <laughs> There's a lot of people don't realize that, you know, where that equipment has come from, and they figure that's just from the taxpayers, and they realize that actually who the foundation is or where it come from and where we're going, so. We all decided, you know, we wanted to be, we wanted to individually fund the first round of grants, each of us giving what we could, mm -hmm. and we did that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it was very exciting as mm -hmm. other donors stepped up and the enthusiasm from people, they, you know, mm -hmm. like us, they thought, wow, this is a terrific idea. Mm -hmm. So we started getting some sizable grants and eventually we were getting them, we were getting them from individuals and then corporations and matching grants. So that was very exciting. I think by the second year we raised $90,000. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now it was, okay, we got the money. Uh, Great, let's, what do we do with it? Uh, the foundation has had a great effect um, in uh, two particular uh, circumstances I can think of at Hampshire High School uh, and at the high school level in particular. The first one is when we started forensics classes a few years ago, um, we were able to secure one of the large grants uh, from the foundation uh, and we were actually able to purchase all the startup materials for all of the forensics classes in the school district. Uh, so we were able to get that started uh, and that program till today um, is still running, uh, now funded by the school system, uh, but running and very, very successful um, and one of our more popular elective courses out of the science department. Our project involves um, getting different toys and supplies for the play-based assessment. Play-based assessment is what we do here at DeLacy to evaluate children um, who come in through early intervention or through our screening process and it is a series of observers so we have a psychologist who would be observing a speech pathologist and at times an occupational therapist as well as a physical therapist 
Um, we are kind of observers and we have a special education teacher who would be playing with the child. And while the children are playing, um, all the uh, professionals, we are observing different items, trying to figure, you know, determine if the child is developing at age appropriate levels. One of the other ways that we've been very fortunate at Hampshire High School, uh, and then the other two high schools as well, is through the Fine Arts Department, especially the Art Department, who has um, been able to bring in uh, resident artists and, and artists that travel and come in and provide programming, provide opportunities for our students to where we will host an activity here at Hampshire High School and one day bring in uh, Jacob students, one day bring in W. Count students, and one day is for the Hampshire students. Um, and learn new techniques and various things uh, that are very topical in art and have been very, very beneficial to us. Um, the one that I enjoyed the most, I actually went with them on the trip, uh, was when they supported our efforts to go to an alpaca farm uh, and work with alpaca art, uh, which was really, really cool. So uh, it didn't smell so great at times, uh, but very, very exciting time and one that our students really, really enjoyed. Um, so they get to see the eclectic nature of really what's available out there. Um, and it's worked very well for us. So uh, the foundation has been tremendously supportive of us. Laura and I worked very hard on the literacy committee. We we enjoyed watching the children learn to read. Junior high students really, for, for whatever reason, we all think it's social, they decide that reading isn't cool. So um, Laura came up with, with some ideas for um, authors and books, etc. And Janine and her educators came up with some ideas on what could happen. So that one project that I think with bringing in the author, Neil Schusterman, after the students had been taught the book, um, we bought the book sets for the children. Um, the educators put the le lesson plans together. The author came in and it was without a doubt, when you look back on it, you take a look at the evaluations after it, we had a 98% approval rating for what we did. The most wonderful piece about that is when they went in to do the writing clinic with the students, I could get why teachers teach, because you could, as he starting to teach, it's just, you could hear a pin drop, and one hand would go up, and two, by the end, these kids were jumping out of their seats, and you could understand what teachers loved about teaching. If we could capitalize on you know reaching out to more people, um, I think that that's a next step is is to keep reaching out to the greater community. We want to see our students thrive and have a path to find something bigger than themselves, and the foundation is the way to do it. When you click onto the District 300 uh, website, uh, there's a special link for the foundation right underneath the Board of Education, so it's very prominent. You will find a lot of information. Uh, you'll also see how easy it is to apply for a grant. We have two types of grants, innovation grants and large project grants. The process is really painless, and if you have an idea, if you have a thought, we want to hear it. it, it it's essential that the community have a better understanding of um, the, the foundation and where the foundation needs to go in the future. I hope everybody will take the time and really in invest in our kids' futures.